Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you're with us wherever you are. If you're joining us locally on television here in Santa Barbara at TVSB, we welcome you. And of course, many of you are joining us at other places all over the world at our goodlifetelevision.org, which is kind of the primary place where people have, have watched the videos over the last few years. And, and of course, the YouTube page and all the social media. And, and now we have this podcast over the last few months. We see so many of you joining us there, which is Good Life Conversations is where you can find it. Good Life Conversations. If you want to work out and listen or whatever you do, we are on the podcast platform. And, and we're so excited to be here every week. We, it's just such a joy and an honor for me to be able to interview and get to know really incredible people. It's been, it's been really fun. Uh, it, it's always surprising in some way, it seems like. And, and what we're doing is kind of dwelling on the good stuff. I mean, we, we talk about everything. Life is full of suffering and difficulty, but what we dwell on and um, it, is so important. And so one of the things that Good Life that we're trying to do here is kind of give you some, some inspirational people and stories to kind of think about and how it might affect your life. So we're so glad you're with us. I'm really excited about my guest today. Uh, Frank Sontag is with me. Hey, Dean. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I'm, I've, I've, I've been a fan of Frank. Frank has been a radio. He's, he's been in the media for, for a, a while, uh, including at KKLA uh, for eight and a half years until just in the last year he's kind of transitioned from that role. But he had a very successful show. He's written, his, he's written a wonderful book called Light the Way Home. Uh, my incredible ride from new age to new life, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. And he's founded something called the Kingdom Men's Gathering, uh, which you're going to want to hear about, if you're, especially if you're a man. Uh, but we're going to talk about that later, too. But I wanted to start with kind of where just your upbringing. Where did where, you come from? Well, born and raised in Cleveland. Great place to be from. <laughs> My dad got a gig in the movie industry in the 60s. So he came home one day and said, we're moving to Hollywood. Came out here in the 60s, been trying to leave ever since. Uh, raised Catholic, went to Notre Dame High School in the Valley, all boys then, not now. And uh, thought I knew God, thought I knew Jesus. When I graduated high school, I was a basketball player and I thought to myself, oh, I've had enough of this. So I kind of walked away from the Catholic faith and jumped out in the world and did a bunch of stuff. Praise God, I repented of and we don't have to get into. Right, <laughs> right. right. And how did you get to radio? So in 1984, in June, I did what a lot of young men did and do, trying to find themselves. I bought a motorcycle. And I had a uh, moment in time, June 17, 84, where on the 101 freeway south of where we are, I looked in my mirror to make a lane change. Uh, no helmet laws in 84. And I looked in my mirror and a car was on us. I was dating a woman at the time. And on impact, they hit us doing 110. So I'm here. Praise God, she survived. She got hurt very badly. But that started me on a path of questioning who am I, why am I here? I moved away for a while, came back to LA and started listening to radio. Actually on KLOS, which is a rock station. Sunday night, some dude was on at midnight talking about life and purpose. And I got very interested in him. I started mentoring with him. And I didn't know anything about the new age but I ended up taking over his show and became a very prominent New Age teacher in SoCal for 21 years. So I fell into radio, did that show for a couple of decades, uh, was at KKLA for eight and a half years, now I have a new show. <clears throat> so I've been in radio 36 years and for a guy that dropped out of college twice because I was terrified to take a speech class, uh, God does have a sense of humor <laughs> and that's a true story. Yeah, it's a unique thing to be able to talk for that long. Yeah, the Sunday night show was kind of a proving ground. It was five hours of commercial free radio, and I just learned oh on the my fly. Gosh. Oh, yeah. I really wanted it. Be careful what you ask for. I remember the first night I did my show, they had let go of the previous host who did it for about 10 years. And for about a year, all I got were calls from people saying, We don't like you. Where's the other guy? <laughs> So that was my first year, and I learned in radio, people are going to like you, some aren't, because you're a, pro, a public figure. So I kind of learned from the ground up, no experience in radio. I wanted to be in movies. My dad was a gaffer and a lighting director. I grew up on movie sets at Universal Studios, got that bug, did acting for a while, but 
radio has been very prominent in my life and uh, you say uh, you learned to speak. One thing that I know that God has developed in me is an ability to listen. Mm. Doing radio all that long and interviewing people, I've learned to listen to people and respond. So, and I've also heard from people that I'm very patient and I'm saying that's the Holy Spirit, that's not me. Spend right. a day with me, I'm not the most patient guy on the planet, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's a great point. What, so when, uh, when I was young, my dad, remember Dennis Prager's relig Religion on the Line? I used to come in Sunday night and curse him from across the hall. You did? He's a friend now and I've told him the story. So I know Religion on the Line very well, Saturday and Sunday nights. I think well, why did, why did you curse him? I was not a believer. Well, uh, neither is he. Well, but he would have, you know, the religion on the line. and Oh, the pastor and the priest. and the... I kind of went the spiritual but not religious route right. as a New Age guru. <laughs> right. And I would listen to him going, oh, those people are so foolish, they're so weak. My conversion was pretty radical. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But I used to just not say the nicest things about him. <laughs> Fast forward to a few years ago, I'm at KKLA. And who's in the studio next to me but Dennis every day. <laughs> right. So one day I went and I said, hey, I have to tell you a story. And I told him. And then I said, please forgive me. I'm a follower of Christ now. And I love being next to you. And he just started laughing. You know, Dennis, that's a very interesting story. And did you ever call in? And so I knew religion on the line very well. Okay. So when my dad was a pastor, a Presbyterian pastor for 40 plus years. So Dennis would he would always have the the somebody in a robe i don't know if it was a whatever it was <laughs> but then the, the the evangelical pastor yep. and the catholic priest yep. and a rabbi sometimes and so my dad sometimes was the pastor oh my goodness and so we would go down and it was sunday night late like nine to twelve or something like that nine to twelve yeah and so my dad would be there and so i would sit next to him i'm probably 10 or 11 or 12 and i'm watching the call screen to see the, what the caller's topic is. And then I'm going through my dad's briefcase to get his sermon on different subjects. Oh, wow. So I was like his, like, You're a right -hand I was guy. his aide. Yep. Yeah, he's sitting right over there, by the way. Oh, my goodness. So we had a ball with Dennis Prager. But I, I, and, that, and I fell in love with Dennis Prager then. Yeah. And then, of course, what he's become now. So that station is no longer there, as you probably know. Right. But I used to come in at midnight, and I'd play rock and roll to the nth degree kind of, you know, hoping they would hear stuff. Oh, really? I was, I was just a rebel and an angry kid. And then God got a hold of me in 2009, and I've been a follower of him ever since. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. We're going to talk about that in one second. But so Dennis Prager, we need, I, I just can't figure this out. Like, I, I know where you're going, and I have an answer, but go ahead. Okay, well, then go ahead. Why is he not one of us, yes. in a sense? Like, so I've gotten to know Dennis very well in the last eight years. Um, I've been on a show I was just on three months ago talking about KMG. So very short insight, um, 2013 or 14, he did a series of events with then Robbie Zacharias. Mm -hmm. They went around college campuses and did kind of a debate. I hosted the one at Biola. I also knew Robbie very well. The bottom line is, you know, we found out a lot of stuff about Robbie after the fact, which is a real tragedy. But in terms of his knowledge of the word, oh, yeah. Robbie was incredible. Yeah. So I asked Robbie, you've been with Dennis a year. Tell me what's going on. He says, Frank, he knows the word. We pray for him in God's timing. But I think Dennis, he's like one of the most lovely men I know. He's one of my good friends. And I think he has so much invested in who he identifies as a Jewish man, you know, I think God's working on him. Here's a very short story. I was just on his program. I have a men's ministry. We talk a lot about spiritual warfare. And I told Dennis on the air, because he was asking me what I think about culture shift. And I said, we're right now under the spirit of deception. I believe it's spiritual warfare. And I said, I believe Satan is real. As a new wager, we didn't. I can maybe tell that story. But I told Dennis my reasons, and he said on the air, and I just heard this, I did a podcast Tuesday with a friend, and he said, we heard Dennis said on your program that he's always, as Jews, they don't believe in Satan, but he's now starting to entertain the reality that he is indeed who he is. 
So I thought, maybe there's a little bit there going on, wow. but how do you deny evil doesn't even hide itself anymore? Right. And so I don't know what I would do if I wasn't a follower of Christ and knew his word. Um, right. So we just, I love Dennis, pray for him. Yeah. Um, and Christians love him. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that guy. Because he's, he's so brilliant. Dennis, if you see this, yeah. I do smoke cigars. We could. <laughs> I don't, as you know. But, <laughs> but we could do that. He could just sit there. Yeah, whatever. I will. I'll, I'll cut your cigars <laughs> up and get your water or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, what was I just going to say? Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I heard Dennis, one time he was asked, and I don't remember. Maybe it was one of those things he was doing with Jordan Peterson. Okay. He did something in Santa Barbara. But it was, there was some interaction where he was kind of talking about his own uh, faith journey or you know this doesn't the, lack from hearing the word right he's heard right, it right, 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 right. hundreds of times I'm sure he's times. gotten lots of people talking to him the, the uh, yeah that's very interesting to me and he um, yeah it, it, I just couldn't agree more I find you know, he's the type of guy that when I'm when I'm hearing him and they're just like the wisdom yes and the just incredible wisdom he's a deep thinker for sure yeah well, that's a, that's wonderful. Um, so let's let's go back to your new age thing, and then take us to two thousand nine. Okay, and and walk us through kind of what your journey has been. And 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 again, the book is "Light the Way Home: My Incredible Ride from New Age to New Life" by Frank Sontag. So after my motorcycle crash, as I said, I took over this radio program. I began to be a public speaker, new age, um, and I dabble in all sorts of stuff. I liked Eastern mysticism. I survived a crash I shouldn't have and just started getting into near-death experiences and, and the like. So, Dean, I, I, I'd look back on now, I mean, I really believed in what I was saying. Spirituality, love, we would have, uh, I'd speak in front of scores of people and really thought in a way I was doing God's work and it wasn't until I got radically saved and God showed me a different lens, I'm like, what was I thinking? Now, New Age is the worship of self. Uh, we're sparks of the divinity. It's all about developing and enhancing who you are, which is okay, but it's an obsession almost to the point where you become your own God. And I didn't understand it because I didn't know the Bible. And so I look back on it now and I think God was patient with me and preparing me for this day in December of 2009 that I'll tell you a little bit about. So my best friend gave his life to the Lord in 2006. He was a new age follower of mine and we did a lot of stuff that guys do. He became a Christian, his older brother is a pastor still to this day. And I remember thinking, oh, don't become one of them. I had a bad taste in my mouth about faith and Catholicism. And um, so I found out after the fact, they decided, I call it, they decided to have a Christian intervention. I had grown to the heights of New Age. The LA Times did a front page piece on me, called me a New Age guru. And I wasn't arrogant, but I bought into it in a lot of ways. Thought I was really something special. And so on a December afternoon, they invite me to play a round of golf, which I used to play a lot. It's an evil game. I don't know if you've tried it. Yes. Um, and we break after nine and we go to lunch and they started hammering me, Dean. But for three years, when my friend gave his life to the Lord, they just loved on me. So I didn't take it personally. I heard them out because they had my back. They didn't accept what I was doing, but they loved me. So two and a half hours, they walked me through. Yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I've done this. Yes, I've done that. I do believe Jesus died on a cross. And so they lead up to the moment of like, well, and I didn't give them the well. What came out of my mouth was because the will is so strong, sin is strong. I said, you know, if it works for you guys, I'm happy for you. And then I get into, but I'm a spiritual teacher. I lead thousands of people. And for the first time in a number of years, I had been out of the church for 37 years, I heard myself and I started getting defensive. And I've kind of gone back to that moment 
wondering, was that the Holy Spirit prompting me? But here's the bottom line. So Pastor Dale says to me, look, if you don't make it home today, like you shouldn't have made it home 25 years ago on that motorcycle, are you right with God? I had been married to my wife for a handful of years. Our son was a year and a half. And he starts laying on me, you know, you've got a brand new wife, family, son. If you don't make it home, are you right with God? And I'm like, of course I am. I'm blah, blah, blah. But, and I don't want to get emotional, but there was something inside that shifted where I really felt on some deep seminal level, I was empty. And when he said, would you sit in your car and meditate, he air quoted me because I was a meditation teacher among other things. And I knew that was his little dig. Would you sit in your car and meditate if you're right with God? So I knew he loved me. So I sat in my car, Dean, and I went to start the ignition and I'm like, okay, all right, well, I'll sit in my car. And I got really quiet and I went to level. Level's an expression of meditation that we taught. I got really quiet and I started getting really hot. And I thought, am I sick? Do I have a fever? Monitored myself, no, I'm fine. And then literally um, a moment later, I heard a voice that said, are you ready to submit to me? And I heard it as clear as day. I didn't feel coerced. I didn't feel fear. I had complete free will. I knew who it was. When your father speaks to you, who knew you before you ever created, you know his voice. He said, are you ready to submit to me? And I said, yes. And then he said, pick up your cross and follow me. Now we all know, oh, that's scriptural. Dean, I was raised in Catholicism. I'd never heard that in my life. Mm. We did catechism. We didn't do the Bible. Nothing else was exchanged. The sensation kind of went away. I get on the phone and I say, I think I want to go back to church. So I knew something happened when I said that. And I asked Pastor Dale if he knew a church. He pointed me to Cornerstone. Francis Chan was my first pastor. Mm. And then that started about an 18 month process where everything got turned upside down. Everything got turned upside down. My wife and I were new age soulmates. She wasn't too pleased. All my followers left me. They called me Judas. <laughs> new Agers <laughs> call me Judas. Wait, they don't believe I'm like, Judas. they don't, that's a biblical <laughs> expression. But I remember like it was yesterday. So it was an 18 month process where God took everything away. And I remember wow. there was a moment uh, five weeks after the fact, I had been at Cornerstone. This is what a good Christian man I was. I knew red letters meant Jesus. Dale mailed me a Bible, and I was up one night crying and weeping. My wife wanted some time away. Everything was really turned upside down. I opened the book. First things I see were red letters. It opened the, the Gospel of Luke, Luke 9, 23. When I read... Jesus' words, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me. Oh. I hit the ground. I'm like, that's it. Uh, I'll never waver. I was 54. Um, I have not been raised in the church. So my take on men and Christianity, maybe if we have time, we'll get into. But that's when I said, I'm all in, Lord. And God restored much of what he took away. My wife and I have been married 18 years now. She gave her life to the Lord in 2011. And uh, it's not been easy, but um, I'm here to say I'm nothing without him. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, I'm, I need the book. And like, Dale, Dale told me, he said, I'm going to prepare you. Your sanctification, which you don't even know what that word means <laughs> at the time, is going to be really gnarly. Because I was 54, I was a new age teacher. He said, man, God's going to fast track you. <laughs> and the last 13 years have been rough. I started the men's ministry. Boy, you want to talk about people don't believe Satan's real. Start a men's ministry and see what happens. Because <laughs> we've had about every type of attack you can I have. I can only imagine. Right. So there you right. go. Wow. So, yeah. So, I mean, before, I want to get to the men's thing in a second. But so the... the, the 
What would you say to, to somebody who is a, who's in 2000, they're in the 2009, they're in the car, they, they hear it, they make a decision, they turn their heart. In terms of your path, what has been helpful to you? I'm, I'm sure it hasn't been perfect. What has been helpful to you in terms of your discipleship journey or whatever you want to call it, your, your journey to, to, to today? Well, the first thought that comes to mind is the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, Francis Chan wrote a book years ago called The Forgotten God, all about the Holy Spirit. So his early teachings, I really uh, absorbed deeply and I started being fascinated by the Holy Spirit. Um, Holy Spirit, reading the Word, and God brought a couple of real strong men into my life to help me along. Daryl Strawberry is one of them. Really? Oh yeah, he's one of my best buddies. We'll get him on your show. Oh my gosh. He is, uh, he's about as on fire as anybody that I know. Yeah, I love him. And he told me a story that he got radically saved at a Morris Cirillo revival. Really? And crying, tears, got it. And within about six months, he was back to being just a mess because no one discipled him. Right. So I know discipleship is of the essence. Right. That's what we do at KMG. So I got discipled by some guys, and um, God threw me into Christian radio, which I only have been saved two and a half years. <laughs> so that's another story for another time, doing Christian radio and having the perfect Christians tell me that I have no right to be on the radio talking about Christianity right. because I haven't walked with God too long. <laughs> right. But uh, I do know who my king is, and... Um, I am uh, humbled every day when I wake up and I, I, I pray, thank you for saving me from myself. Yeah, oh, that's so beautiful. The book is Light the Way Home, my incredible ride from new age to new life. This is Frank Sontag. Um, so let's talk about the Kingdom Men's Gathering. And may I say one thing about the book? Yes, you may. So do not buy it on Amazon. Okay. For reasons of which I don't support Amazon. Right. Just go to franksontag.com if there's a listener that wants it. Franksontag.com. Yeah. Franksontag, S-O-N-T-A-G.com. I'm going to do that myself. So talk about your vision for men, specifically the Kingdom Men's Gathering, which I know is now happening, and I think people want to know about it. I was fascinated to learn about it, but talk about your vision for this. So I had been at KKLA for about a year, sitting in the air studio, sensing to do something with men. Uh, I, like so many men, have that father wound, dad wasn't around, divorced my mom. So I started getting the sense and I'm like, I I'm not somebody that even is very versed in fatherhood, let alone being a man. But I felt like it was the Lord. I went into my boss, he said no. I'm like, okay. But three weeks later, it got stronger. I went and I said, we need to do something. And he just said, whatever you think, uh, I kind of will step back. So we started doing men's gatherings through the radio station. I had no idea what I was doing, Dean. The first one, I called a couple of buddies. We rented a church in Orange County. Uh, 10 days before the event, we had like 35 guys signed up. And I heard some grumblings. And my heart was so pure because I'd gotten recently saved. I'm like, look, if we help save one marriage, right. what's the problem here? <laughs> so the morning of the event, the night before the website crashed, we had 800 guys show up. Oh, my gosh. Just out of nowhere. And I'll never forget my boss, who will go unnamed. He calls me and says, we need to do another one of these. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. We need to pray about this. So I knew from the very beginning this was God. We did nine through the station. The last two, we had 3,000 guys at both events. And uh, in 2017, I began to sense God was saying, no, uh, do a 501c3. So we started KMG Ministries. We're sustained by, you know, pennies, people that support us. Uh, we did our first event in 2018. We've done a number of them and we do man camps we have one coming up in a few weeks we do bible studies discipleship courses um, you know dean there's 21 million men in america that are between the ages of 10 to 19 and i am so grieved and angry that we have men 
let our culture slide to a place by which for the most part these young boys and young men don't even know what a man is anymore right let alone biblical masculinity right, right. so this is where my fire is yep. god's kind of resurrected that in my life and so kmg i left kkla a year ago i felt and sensed god prompted me to do this full time and that's where I'm at right now, uh, trying to get men to step and be, uh, step up and be warriors for Christ. That's so good, so good. Yeah, there, there was kind of the whole promise keepers thing back in the day, but there is such a need for this. You said 21 million between 10 and 19 boys. Yep, that's right, 10 to 19 year olds. Yeah, that, that's that's staggering. Really important. And you think about what's to come in the next generation if we don't get it together with them. Right. Um, the one thing I will say about KMG, we are not a church ministry. We're a Christian men's ministry. A lot of churches don't like us. I'll right. tell you a very 30 second quick story. So I don't know if you remember a guy named Brian Bosworth. Oh yeah. Okay, so I became good friends with Brian a few years ago. He recently got saved, which I thought if God can save the Boz, right. we, we follow a great God. So I had him speak at one of our events he got up on stage, very raw testimony, and he said an expletive. But in the context, it was like he was pouring his heart out. Well, I got tugged by one of the pastors there that was very angry. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, I, but are you not listening to what he's saying? <laughs> right. So I got early on, Cam G, uh, the guy I do it with is Pastor Mike Johnson. I couldn't do it without him. We call ourselves kind of renegades for Christ. Yeah because we're raw. We have a few pastors from time to time speak, but we mostly get guys with testimonies that are in the world, on fire for the Lord now, because I just don't think my heart is for non-saved men. Where are they gonna hear the word? Right. They're not gonna go to church. No. So that's partly- They don't swear in church, but they're still not gonna go. True. <laughs> so that's part of it. And the other part is, and I don't wanna get in trouble here, but I think there's a lot of dudes in the church are checking boxes and they think we're just supposed to be nice. And right. when I read what Jesus did and what he's going to do when he comes back, I used to say on my program, he's not coming back to give out free hugs. He's a warrior. So we challenge men to learn the complete Jesus right. and then um, declare war and take some ground back because Satan is just wreaking havoc right now. That's right. That's and men so in the true. church, men that follow Christ, we, we, we should not be putting up with this. Right. Totally agree. Wow. That's a big vision. What is the website? Uh, either franksontag.com okay. or kmgministries.com. It'll take you to the okay. same place. Okay, KMG Ministries. So it's Kingdom Men's Gathering. They're having one coming up. We just had one. Mark Little, my, my boy Mark Little. You He's know. my best friend. He is? He's my best friend. Okay. You got to ask. I don't even know if I remember this. We, I, I used to be the uh, executive director of Christian Legal Aid of Los Angeles. Oh my god! We gosh. had an office in the church. Okay. What's the name of the church? Faithful Central. Faithful Central. Yep. We had an office in the church. Mark was upstairs for me. So one day we met in his office, and he told me a little bit about his story, and yeah. it was just like unbelievable. Yeah, I'm like this guy. He's been through it. He has been through. He doesn't have an office there. I don't think anymore. No. But he's doing. But I, anyway, he, he may not remember me, but tell him hi anyway. I will. He, he's, I, a, he's a great He's my guy. best friend. He and his wife, Tigra, have an abortion and uh, a recovery ministry called right. No Longer Bound. Yep. And they're amazing people. And, and I, I don't know how I could walk through this life without Mark. He's oh, like my, a, he's my guy. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, we're out of time. I didn't, I, well, we kind of talked about most of the stuff I wanted to. Kingdom Men's Gathering is the... Uh, the, they have these events and Bible studies curriculum. It sounds like various things. So check out, but you can start by just going to franksontag.com and then find the Kingdom Men's Gathering, share it, find them on social media, share it. This is a really powerful thing, really important thing, and so important for these young men. Thank you. Dean, thank you. This it's, is uh, amazing. It's been an honor, and I appreciate what you do at Good Life and pray for you and keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. Yeah. Frank Sontag, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.